Zacchaeus. Where, where they don't realize you're making fun of me. It's key. <laughs> He's back. The T-Bone was such good company, we played again. We hit the Ibotsi inland links, built on old slimes dams and quarry pits. It's so beautiful, it makes me squeal with delight on the inside. In this video, you'll see practical, over-the-shoulder tips you may not have seen or heard before that you can take to the course and to the short game area immediately. On the first hole, always take your most comfortable club. A good start gets you feeling happy to be there. A top ball or duck hook off the first tee because you're hitting the wrong club and you're already in the wrong frame of mind. Here, T-Bone can easily reach from 176 yards with a 7 iron. If the hole is in reach, you can go for it. Only when it's out of your top range of reliable clubs should you split the distances. Warning! Opening hole Shuri's incoming! It only takes one good shot. Swing. Sit, sit. Great shot, great shot. Dude. In the hole, baby. Whoo! Get it. Nervous. Excellent. Part, well planned par. Awesome. Oh man, what a player. Oh, is it staying up? I didn't see. Yeah, it might have just rolled out. Okay. Eh? No. Fine. No. Stop ball. When you're that close to the lip, have a look. And you should know your ball flight. What can you realistically get out of there? Pitching wedge or nine. Okay, I would go. Pitching wedge. I mean, how many meters do we have? Okay, so if you if you if you connect a pitching, 110 or 100, I mean you still got an approach in. Yeah. We don't want to go greedy with a seven or something and then buff it into the okay. front. So take something that'll definitely clear. When you're in a bad situation like this, just make sure you get the ball out. Don't be greedy. Just do your best to advance the ball towards the hole and away from the hazard you're in. Look at that. Perfect player. Oh, oh, I did perfect. Go to gym. I'm explaining to my man T-Bone that the usual lob wedge pitch is useless in this situation. Do you know how to hit a 40-yard pitch shot with 32 yards of green between you and the pin? Because as a four handicap, I definitely do not. With a lob wedge, you have to pitch it too far onto the green. You reduce your margin for error. When you do that, you increase stress. You're thinking of getting it inside two or three feet, but you don't know how. Of course, you chunk it or leave it halfway to the hole. But players, I do know how to hit an eight iron that lands on the front of the green and rolls up to the hole. And so do you. Everybody does. You don't need to know the air density is 26 to hit a bump and run. That's science, brah. Now watch this. This lie, it's way too dangerous to go to the pin from here because he's going over the entire length of the bunker. With the stance he has, it's a 1 in 50 shot. Rather look for a different line so that if you hit a perfect shot out the center of the club, it'll be safe. And if you miss hit it, you'll still be safe and not in the same or another hazard. If he even remotely fluffs this, 
it's going to fly high and soft and leave him with a fried egg lie for his third shot in the same fairway bunker. I told him to aim it here, and if he fluffs it, which is a 98% chance, he'll still be in the fairway with a nice, easy approach to the perfect, green. Perfect, 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 perfect shot. It had no chance out of there, and you didn't go straight at the pin and leave yourself in the bunker again. Players, when you have a 30 to 60 yard shot, look at multiple options. In this situation, we could bump and run the ball along the ground with a 6 or 7 iron onto the middle of the green. We could also hit a lofted pitch shot, which is what T-Bone chose. What he does need to do with these partial shots is shorten the backswing so he accelerates through the ball instead of decelerating and chunking it. By shortening the backswing, you can learn how far to swing the club back for different distances because the follow-through is always the same. It's an acceleration. And because you've limited the backswing, you limit the maximum velocity the club head can move, thereby limiting the distance to whatever you decide. Long backswings tell your brain to decelerate because you've taken a backswing normally associated with full shots. There's some space over there, hey? Yeah. Let's go have a look. Wait, wait, do another practice swing. Yeah, like that. And then just make sure you, you just make sure you hit the ball out. There you go, perfect. Exactly perfect. Superb shot. Yep, 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 yep. I think See, I should have gone a clever. That's the shot. Ah. Not money shot, bro, money shot. Left, Left or right. right? Now, when you're hitting it downhill, you're going to hit it softer, it's going to take more break. You're going to aim for a hole around this part, and it's going to just bring it back into the hole, okay? So find your line. Yeah. Oh, I like that. That looks really good. Right over this little thing, okay? So find something along that line, because that's the crest of your break, pretty much. Yeah. And you're going to start coming in. Find something on that line, and then line up to it, and cut to the hole here. This old hole, that's your hole. That's just the strength you want. Here we go, baby. Oh, boy! Oh, you Par 3s are all reachable for you potential 90 breakers and you can target them for pars. You're in control of your lie conditions, your angle into the hole, everything. Oh man, what a boy. What you shape do you expect with a hybrid? I expect a little bit of a fade. Okay, that's great then. Go. So Where are you going to go? I'm going to aim right edge of the right bunker. Yeah, 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 yeah. Perfect. Exactly right. Look at that. Go, ball. Go. Oh, dude. And the best, the best, the best chip, and the best chip on the on the hole. That was an excellent throw. Now players, sometimes we mess up a good opportunity. But making bogeys oh, when trying to break 90 right, is going right. to happen way more often than making pars. Write the number into the card and never complain about a bogey. Right, I suggested T-Bone aim right of the bunkers, in case he connected it really well out of the rough. You don't want to aim toward more trouble when recovering from trouble. There we go. That was a long one again. <laughs> okay, I'll bring a photo. This one is nice and downhill and downwind, eh? So you're going to look for your hole to be about this line, your hole. Be somewhere on this distance, so it just dies down toward the hole. Start moving toward the hole 
and the entrance of your hole is here. So imagine that. So imagine your hole is about here. This is the distance. Yep, yep, sit down, sit down. What is that? A buggy? Double. Double. Using the rangefinder helped T-Bone make a confident swing at this one. We knew the bunkers were good aiming points, they were out of range. We also discovered that it's quite short to carry the ball over the bog. Low stress engaged. Sometimes, I notice guys trying to break 90 and 100 have long pre-shot routines. They often have a couple of practice swings and 17 swing thoughts. Honestly, that might be the thing getting in your way. See how you go by just hitting the ball without thinking. Remember, plan your shot in the think box. Once you've planned it and you've committed to it, cross the imaginary decision line into the play box. In the play box, there are no more thoughts. Your brain is clear. You are merely executing what you committed to a second ago. Gentlemen, when trying to break 90 or 100, I have to tell you, you're going to make way more bogeys than pars. Once you accept that, you'll be free. Once you're free, you'll allow yourself to play stress-free golf and hit the simplest, most comfortable shot at any given moment. If the shot is a 7-iron off the tee, to avoid out of bounds left and water right, so be it. The way of the player dictates you're not allowed to complain about a bogey snatched from the jaws of a certain par. You are allowed to complain about a 4-putt double bogey, but then move on. The next hole needs you to plan it. It needs a daddy. Be the next hole's daddy. Do you think good daddies have emotion incontinence? Neither do I. Ow!